beautiful people, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm bringing you my friend and my guest, Anne. So she is a cafe owner that lives in Melbourne and that has brought so much joy into the suburb, Notting Hill. She has built a great community there. The locals love her, the locals' pets love her, the handmakers love her too. Her cafe in Shmo is more than just a cafe. You can expect workshops, you can expect premium coffee, you can expect light meals, and you can expect to buy a gift for that special someone in your life. The back of the cafe is an actual shop where she sells products that are handmade by the locals. We started talking because I had a market there and her and her partner has helped me so much on that day. It was from that day on our friendship group. Her and her partner are both such lovely people and I am super super blessed to have them in my life and I cannot wait for her to share her story with you. Enjoy! Uh, well, before I ask you any questions, I would love to know how are you feeling today? Today, I'm actually feeling good. Yeah, I was really excited about this. And to That's see you. Yeah, someone like, said we got to go home and like sort everything out. Um, I feel good. I think knowing that I'm going to take a little break next weekend, um, I've got something to look forward to. So I feel, I feel good. Would you like to tell people about your story and what were you doing before Inchmill and how did it all start? Oh, it's so long ago. It's almost four years ago now. Yeah. Um, so actually I studied, um, I studied nutrition. So all along mm. I wanted to be a dietitian and I thought I'd be working in public health. I even started working in a hospital. Um, but I've always had hospitality background and and then I think, you know, I just went, I worked so many hospitality jobs. I ended up um, managing someone else's restaurant and cafe and that was like a big thing, you know, a huge like sort of step and a lot of um, learning for me. And then um, how Inchmill came about was, um, so my sister-in-law, she had um, my niece's seventh or sixth, I don't remember now, her birthday party <laughs> at this um, shop, like so the current location where Inchmill is. And um, the lady that ran the shop, um, Christina, she used to have like this vintage caravan that she parked at the back and um, ran craft parties. And so that's how they got connected. And she was always like, oh, you know, it'd be so good to have something like some sort of coffee shop or cafe at the front section so you know so the people more people would come in because um if anybody's been to Inchmill, it's like there's no foot traffic you know it's down a suburban street unassuming and then there's just this shop um so my sister-in-law asked me and at that time um i was between jobs so i had time um so i wasn't committed to anything um and then I was like, hmm, okay, let me think about it. And I actually was at, um, you know, Hillsong Colour Conference in Sydney. I know, no, is it similar to Planet Shakers Conference? It's similar, but it's like all women, you know, it's like thousands of women all together. Yeah, they call it um, Beautiful Woman at Planet Shakers. Yes. Continue. Yes, that's right, that's right. Um, and I was like, cool, um, I'll pray about it. And my prayer was really simple. I think my faith is very simple as well. I was just like, okay, God, if this is what you want, I just need a name. Because it's always been my dream to have a cafe. So I was just like, okay, God, if this is what you want me to do, I just need a name. And then um, I remember, you know, hearing or, or like just getting this sense, you know, or little by little. And so I Googled it. And of course, there's already a cafe called Little by Little. So um, I searched for um, like a, just another word that means the same thing. And mm -hmm. I came across Inchmill. And I really loved the example, you know, that they have um, online, like on the dictionary, like how they describe or how they use the word. And mm -hmm. it something along the lines of um, the troops went through the village 
um, so I think it's like rescuing people in Shmuel. Um, I think, don't quote me. Um, but the, the vision in my head was like very, very cool. It was just like, you know, just something unassuming and just existing and um, but making a difference and making a change a bit at a time. Um, so that was kind of a little bit prophetic for me as well. Um, and then yeah, I was like, cool, I've got a name. And mm. it all started just from there. Yeah, so it took me, so that all the experience I had managing that previous restaurant really helped because I knew, I sort of just knew what to do to get things off the ground. Um, yeah. And so it took me six months um, mm -hmm. to plan and, you know, get, get everything ready, you know, I had to like talk to plumbers, I had to talk to, uh, you know, get, get my, my materials and my, uh, just the fit out and just everything, you know, um, find out about how to set it all up. Uh, but actually that was pretty smooth, pretty smooth sailing. Yeah. yeah, I would say that the first three days of business was scarier than the six months it took to set it all up. Yeah. Because you finally got there and you're like, my doors are open. Yeah, are it's like, oh my god. Come? Yeah, it's like, are people going to come? And, you know, I, I think like, like I said, like I've always wanted a cafe, but I mm -hmm. think in my mind, in my mind, because um, initially Inchmill was just Sort of like a, a concept it was just a, a concept shop it was just 10 months um, see how it goes and um, see how I go as well and I never thought it would be what it is now and so for me it was like in my head I've always envisioned like this bustling sort of Fitzroy vibe hipster type of cafe uh, didn't really know the neighborhood at that time but um, in time I learned that that is not what I want and um, yeah. I'm really happy with what I have. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say a big thank you on behalf of the community because you have done an amazing job, honestly. Thank you. So you should be so proud of yourself. <laughs> thank you. I think, uh, well, I just guess like, um, you know, I was thinking back on like how Inch Mill has grown, you know, over the years and really, I guess all I, I did was I just threw a vision out there and it's just to build community and I really do involve a lot of the community um, just asking questions and through conversations you know and um, that has really helped because that's you know it's just responding it's just responding to need or responding to just what people want and like the community and the customers really help um, each will grow to what it is yeah what has been the top three highlights in the past let's say 12 to 24 months highlights um well last yeah almost a year ago now uh being in july last year inchmill won um the monash small business award in the micro category um, <laughs> and that that was really cool because I think I was getting to a point where I was like, oh man, I've worked so hard. I just really want something to show, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, I can I can see, I can um, hear, you know, all the conversations and, I, and like things like that. People telling me, yeah, you know, you've done a great job, but it's just like physically seeing something that I can put in the shop, like, great. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that was really cool. Um, I guess all the, all the relationships between customers, you know, and neighbors that have grown and flourished. It's just simply like, they just happen to be at the same place at the same time. And um, it's just a simple introduction. And I really see myself like, you know, as, um, uh, what is it called? Like a signpost and just uh, yeah. people in like different directions. And like that, that's been, you know, big highlight. Um, and then yeah, just also just really just writing it out. It's actually been very good, very fun. Yeah. <laughs> so simple. I love it. <laughs> I love the first highlight. Honestly, congratulations. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I love what you mentioned, like how Inch Mill started. Like especially during this time, a lot of people would have a lot of time on their hands. Mm -mm. And I love how you mentioned that you weren't 
doing a lot, like you were jumping in between jobs and you had time, and then you took up this opportunity. So I guess for those who are listening and watching, I just hope that now, like you, you have the time. So please do、mm-hmm. use this opportunity to do something because yeah, a hundred percent. Like I was thinking of this interview, and I thought if just on the off chance she just asked me for some tips, what would I say? And I think like something I really live by is to create opportunities and not obstacles. And yes, me too. Hundred、really、percent. Like,、um, you know, like、uh, let's just say, for example, like outside of Inchmill, there's、um, this thing called a grow free cart, and it's. I'm not sure if it's Australia wide, but definitely all around Victoria. It's just different communities just have、um, a cart, and people just put fresh produce on, and it's just free, free to give and take.、Um, it's like grown by the community for the community, and like I remember at the start, even just having that there and introducing. Um, the neighborhood to it. It was a little bit strange because it's like, oh, it's a great idea, but then it's like, oh, can I really take it for free? And now it's just like, now they're like, oh, cool, you know, I'll just take what I whatever and、um, put back whatever they grow. Yeah.、Um, and I think it's just like even just creating little opportunities like that and、um, to cultivate culture, you know, like giving freely and like kind of taking without having that. Oh my gosh, I owe you something. Um, it, it really is. It just has to be cultivated. You know, it's not normal.、Um, yeah, things like that. Thank you for introducing that to your neighborhood. Funny you say what you just said because I actually do want to ask you to you know provide some tips for people that are listening and watching who might want to open up a cafe themselves one day. What would be your number one or top three principle? For a cafe specifically, yes, hospitality.、Um, do your research. I think that's just <laughs> anything.、Um, I guess, like with anything, it is a risk. And I remember when I first started,、um, I wasn't emotionally attached, and I, I made sure of that. I wasn't emotionally attached to the business.、Um, So that you know, I can separate the two.、Um, is that a second tip? Two. Yeah, well, answer number two.、Um, <laughs> because、um, I guess you you, sh- you have to give yourself a time frame. So that's number three. So give、yeah. yourself a time frame. You know, it's gonna be a risk. So it's、um, what are you willing to give up and sacrifice, and how long are you gonna give yourself? Before you reassess and measure, okay, is this where you want to do, where you want to be, and what changes you need to make to either keep going or fold.、Um, so I think that you just have to be really realistic with that,、um, and it, just be open. It might not look like the way that you planned it, like Inchmill. Yeah. yeah. I feel、mm. like what you said can be applied to many other businesses. Like basically、oh, everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny.、Um, well, you know what? As a small business owner myself, I know how much work. Obviously, what you said,、mm. I 100% agree. And yeah, and I don't have a shop myself,、mm. <laughs> but you actually has an actual store. <laughs> so you know, like、mm-hmm. at the start, I guess it's like,、um, yeah, a lot of I guess like you know, especially with each meal,、um, because I stock so. You know, within the boutique, like of it's all local handmade. So, majority of the makers, it's not their full time.、Mm-hmm. It's like their hobby or their side business. You know,、um, but for me, like this is my everything. Like I wake up and I go to work. I don't know who's gonna come. I don't know if I'm gonna make any money. But if I don't try, I I don't get. You know, I I can't not work.、Um, so I have to work extra hard. So、yeah. that's like really what had been my sort of my work ethic. I just had to. I just had to, you know. Yeah. I didn't want to work. No one would do it for me. Yeah.、Um, what has been the most unexpected since opening Inchmill? Unexpected. Yeah. Ooh, I don't really know. Ah,、uh, I guess. 
Oh, I guess um, if expanding to include like you know all the craft workshops and um, the local handmade. So really being more than just a coffee shop. Like really, the coffee shop is just the front. <laughs> it's all the stuff behind the scenes that like make make it so unique. Yeah. So that I guess that's really unexpected. Um, I never thought that I would be organizing so many things like organizing markets organizing parties and workshops and running a retail store like yeah yeah i guess all of that's unexpected yeah, yeah. again i actually you. really enjoy it <laughs> yeah that is amazing i feel like um having a business you will learn so much about yourself because yeah. Like you said, like you know, like you were like, oh wow, I need to organize all these things. Did you know that you were that organized before? <laughs> uh, no, no, and um, I actually really enjoy organizing. <laughs> yeah, love yeah, it. So Me I, too. Yeah, because I always thought, oh yeah, you know, I'll have like, um, I'll have a cafe with like this like whole, you know. It will expand one day to include a kitchen. I always thought, oh, Intimate will expand one day, include a kitchen, it includes a full menu and all this stuff. And the longer I'm in it, the further away I get from that. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, oh, these are all the things that I don't really want. And yeah, so yeah. Yes. Well, speaking about Intimate the cafe, some people mm. might not know um, mm. what it is. <laughs> so, what can you tell people what? people can expect from Inch Mill? Uh, very homely, um, local, very local, specialty, very good coffee, specialty coffee and produce. Um, I've used the same suppliers from Day Dot. Like I remember um, going out and sourcing just what I feel is the best. Um, so use cheap coffee, you know, like matcha from Matcha Maiden, Golden Guard Turmeric, like all these specialty drinks that I think a lot of people still don't know is on the menu. Um, and yeah, just uh, pastries and things. And now I'm introducing a bit more light meal. Um, yeah, so that's the cafe part. I've actually, during this season, expanded um, into a bit of a grocer produce section as well. Yeah, it looks fucking good. Um, how is the cafe doing during COVID, by the way? Um, it actually has been okay um, because uh, I've been working very hard. <laughs> I've been like implementing a lot of new things, you know, just adding tons of uh, extra items and stuff to the menu um, because a lot of people are working from home, um, obviously. And like I said, like just even introducing um, just the grocer section to order in like fresh bread and milk and eggs and cheese and stuff like that for people. Like the community do appreciate it, and you know they know they're supporting me um, as well you know, when they buy from Inch Meal. So that's been really good. Um, I think that the customers have shifted. So I've met the good thing is I've met a lot of. Um, locals a lot of locals that didn't know about inch mill because they're out and about more and they're working from home um but then there are customers that i just haven't seen for like three four months and like i really miss their faces mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i love thank you so much for sharing that you, you know what you had the way that you shared it it sort of shows how you can adjust to change, mm. which is amazing, mm. it's so important, mm. and also resilience. Mm. And also, it's because the community base that you have built, it really pays back, I would say. Oh, 100%. Like, I remember at the very beginning, um, learning, you know, of the, whatever, what was it, like, stage one of restrictions, and, um, it was actually pretty scary. I was like, oh man, uh, are people gonna come? Like, uh, you know, um, yeah, I was just like, I, I was a little bit stressed, but that really forced me to think of other ways to adapt and adjust, especially like um, the shop, you know, the boutique part with all the local handmade. I've got a beautiful shop with tons of gifts, but then like people aren't coming um, to shop. 
um, even now, like even the restrictions have lifted a little bit. It's still like I can only have a maximum of six people in at a time. Um, yeah, it's still a bit like, you know, it's a bit hard. Um, so just trying all different ways to try and boost um, sales to help all the makers as well, you know, because a lot of them, like if they're not making and things aren't selling, you know, it's, it's really sad. So been really like innovative with that so offering postage like taking tons of videos and photos and it's, people have been really good they just text me and I'm like they're personal shopper <laughs> so yeah really good in that sense yeah love it um thank you for sharing that because for those who are listening and watching who want to start their own small business their own side household whether it be a shop or whatever I think what you share is super valuable Honestly, like build your community, have a deep relationship with your customers, and look at what how Anne is doing. <laughs> they <laughs> love it. They just yeah, they the the support is like really genuine, you know. Yes. And they're like, oh, you know, we really want to support you because you do so much for the community, and I just think, oh, I'm just, I'm just existing. <laughs> I'm just creating opportunities. That's all. You <laughs> can't doing that much. But, um, Love it. Yeah, I guess like I guess like when you create a space where um, and an atmosphere where people do feel like they can contribute and can um, be a part of something bigger, then you know you see you see the effect, you know. Um, and yeah, I'm really really blessed by the community. Yes. Um, just now you mentioned about shipping. Mm. So for those who are living in Melbourne, please do mm. visit Inchmill if you can is on the east area um but for those who are not living in melbourne how can they support you just jump on um instagram or facebook and follow internal cafe um i always post like photos and videos of new stuff and new stock and yeah usually people just text me can i have yep. that sure yeah <laughs> fair <laughs> i would leave the details <laughs> in the description below so for those who are interested, please go check it out. Because you said Inchmill um, offer light meals. So um, I've introduced some bagels. Um, I've always done like toasties and croissants and things. Um, we've got like some pies and sausage rolls and things. Um, the steam gym things, I don't know, like they're just, they're a hot seller. Yeah, <laughs> they're really good. I love they're, them. Like, they're local, you know, um, it's a local company that makes it and it's, they're just delicious. They are. So for whoever who is gonna visit, oh yeah, you tried them. Yes, I love them. <laughs> um, well, because you have to, you know, prep all the food at the cafe. Do you still cook at home yourself? Uh, I'm very, 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 very lucky. I live at home. You don't need to cook. That is very lucky. <laughs> Oh, oh also my like um yeah because uh everything because Inchmill doesn't have a kitchen so um most of the things are from other suppliers so mm -hmm. I don't have to prep uh, food in that in that sense yeah mm -hmm. but they are all from like local yeah trees, right yeah yeah mm -hmm. amazing I wish I was living with my uh is because I personally have worked in um, hospitality as a supervisor so I have you know seen some rude customers <laughs> have you met any I am um, okay so actually yeah actually this is another tip I guess for people that want to open up a cafe and things location really does matter um, because yeah like whatever neighborhood it is like i guess they they're your customers they're your first-hand customers and i guess before moving into notting hill i didn't know too much um about the area um but i am very very lucky because um it, i i get all the customers that i suppose are the right customers <laughs> if there's a thing um by that I mean like uh, there have been businesses that open up in areas that um, just yeah they don't attract the right clientele um, and that really affects business 
um, for me, you know, uh, it's a range. It's like a range of young families and uni students and just families, you know. And a lot of people... Actually, what's really interesting is um, the... Because I'm so transparent about intramural ethos, and I guess that translates to my personal ethos, um, you just, you know, I find that people that are like-minded just flock to intramural. And it, it, it varies, you know, it's like you can come to intramural because you appreciate quality coffee or local handmade or craft or just a good chat or just how candid everything is. Like, yeah, so it, it's a... Uh, it's, it's good location matters i think that was my point i don't remember now <laughs> yeah so are you saying that in the past four years you have never <clears throat> met anyone that is rude oh bad customers that's right uh i very 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 rarely yeah and i'm really grateful because i'm like oh my gosh i don't know how to handle rude customers <laughs> I've, I've, I've been very very lucky yeah. No, 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 not rude customers per se, but like, uh, if people are new, it's very, like, new to Inchmill, it's very easy for me to recognize, of course, because I'm there every day. Um, yeah. And it's like a new face, but I guess um, uh, the the way they interact, you know, or the, they're very, um, they're not as relaxed as most customers that walk through. Because I'm just, I'm so relaxed. I'm always just in like active wear, top knot. <laughs> so it's like, you know, people that come in a, a lot, you know, you find that they just, it's like they're just walking into their home or another person's lounge room, you know. So I guess like after a few visits, people just understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so not all really customers per se, but they're just uh, uh, yeah, different. Yeah. Yes, thank you for that tip for anyone who might want to open up a cafe or any shop really, location is mm. key. What's next for Inchmill? I guess, that's a really good question. I'm so, <laughs> I, need a, I need a break, I need a break to be able to think a bit more, yeah. Um, I feel like, so um, actually, initially, so I said it was initially 10 months for Inchmill and then I signed a lease um, for three years and the three years is coming up um, mm -hmm. end, of, end of next month. Um, so actually it, it's been stressful behind the scenes because I need to have a plan for the next, not that I don't have a plan, but you know, there's a lot of things I need to work through for the next phase and the next step. Um, and I feel like I have achieved everything that I want to achieve or set out to achieve in the first three years. Um, and I guess the next step is, you know, continue, continue to grow, which it has. Um, it's always grown through word of mouth. Um, and that, that's been really great. Um, but I guess just do more, do more of everything. Take more risk. yeah 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 i That's mean if i could I'd, I'd i'd um i'd extend um to include like i would really love to have um just a, a continuous schedule of events you know and not just like on weekends and weekend workshops but just continuous and like have all the creative people come together and just like you know, slot in different classes all the time and that would be really great, but yeah, I'll get there. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say you'll get there. I'm sure you will. Hmm. Because you need to go to the shop every day, do you have hmm. a certain routine? Uh, I, I roll out of bed in the morning. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> No, really. Um, I, I, this year, like it's been yeah. almost, so September will be four years in business. And yeah. some of my really regular customers would know that, like, for the most part, I'm, I'm you know, like, until, until, no, actually, yeah, even now, I don't have opening hours, like trading hours on the window. No. 
so people if they know they know or they go online you know they can go on google they can go on instagram um but i have consistently been late to work uh, <laughs> for a long time so this year you know 2020 i was like i'm gonna go to work on time and i have i've been i've been pretty good you know um yeah. but no, usually i just roll out of bed um and I, I you know morning i don't really have a great routine um but i suppose when i'm at work um i do a lot of my admin in the morning um and usually like on the monday or tuesday i spend a lot of time like doing book work and stuff um and then by the end of the week you know i, I don't really respond to emails <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what other routine. I do. I do keep a lot of lists, a lot of to-do lists, um, shopping lists, to-do lists, and tasks. Um, so that, yeah, that's something that I like and religious about, um, and just crossing things off. You know, that feeling of accomplishment, and then adding to list every little thing. Um, yeah. So, so that that's something. Is that like daily or weekly or monthly? A daily, especially because I finish work at three, so shop closes at three. So anything that happens after that, so any emails or inquiries or workshop inquiries, you know, um, you know, because people just contact me on different platforms, you know, they could text me or email me or social media. So I just have to keep it on my list to like write a huge list for the next day yeah yes. usually by the end of the week i'll start a list for the next week so things like that yeah when you hmm. say little things do you mean by okay so i once heard this podcast man hmm. i should have written the guy's name down but anyway so he said that if it's not on his schedule it won't happen so yeah. ever since i um took on that tip like everything on my list like I, i'm the same i do to do yeah. list daily weekly yeah. monthly like all that stuff and if it's yeah. not my list then it doesn't happen so do you put yeah. like having dinner with your friends or blah blah on the list as well? uh yeah so that that's more on my like uh on in my planner i, ha I have a written i don't yeah I, I rarely use my phone to keep track of stuff i mean i keep my list on there but i'm like a pen and paper person um so yes boxes highlighting um yeah everything but then right. the to-do list and the tasks like yeah same um, i scribble yeah so honestly for those who are listening and watching this is a really good tip if you want to be more productive because as you can mm. sort of tell already Anne is very busy <laughs> but she still keeps everything together and she makes it look so easy well no well i know it's not <laughs> but to people who doesn't see behind the scenes you know that you make it look like yeah it's nothing but really there's a lot behind. i think also it comes with um practice yes and also um like i guess it's routine as well it just becomes clockwork sometimes like I guess like running running a business per se, it's like things like um, stock take and like for cafe, let's just say like for produce and for um, you know even like coffee cups and stuff like that. Like there have been times where I'm like, oh no, I forgot to order this. Um, but things like that, it's just people don't see or don't know. So it's just keep keep list keep track of everything, and it really helps. Yes, that's another tip for her people who might want to <laughs> open up a cafe. Love it. Well, before I ask you my last question, do you feel like there is something that I didn't ask about English meal? Uh, I think you've covered everything. People are like, oh, this is so cool. I really want to do this. I really want to start this or start an English meal like somewhere. Um, and I guess like there isn't anything IP about what I do, you know, like anybody can run a cafe and a shop and all of this. Um, but I think the one key thing is um, whatever vision um, 
you have for business and to cultivate that. Like it just has to seep through every avenue. You know, and and people can see that, people can feel that if that's something that you cultivate day in, day out. And um, that, that's very important to know what vision you have for whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Thank you for the tip. <laughs> well, my last question for you is how do you think in general we can help each other out? I think now that, you know, we live in a digital age, um, social media is like um, actually really brilliant and if we if we use it right. Um, and you know, just things like liking and commenting and being socially interactive really helps. You know, it's amazing how many customers come in. I'm like, oh, how did you hear about Instagram? Oh, I saw it on somebody's feed or I saw it on Facebook or, you know, um, and like, that's just a way of spreading the word, um, just telling people that we exist. You know, yes. This business exists and, you know, and I think the more more businesses connect with each other in that sense even just acknowledging each other like there's real people behind the business um and just knowing that um helps you to share each other's brands yeah yeah i love it so true mm. social media mm. is amazing if you mm. use it in the mm. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah Thank you so, so, so much for your time today. You're so welcome. You, I know you rushed home <laughs> to do this. Oh, good. Thank you. Are you looking to start a business? Or are you looking to open up a shop? I really hope that you have enjoyed the interview and have note down the tips that Anne has provided. Like she mentioned in the interview, she utilized the time that she had four years ago and built something from ground zero to now where a place where the locals hang out. Amazing! So please do utilize your time. If you don't live in Melbourne, that's okay. Support Inchmill on social media. Follow her, like her posts, comment something. It will mean so much to her. Don't forget to subscribe, click the thumbs up button if you have loved it, and share the interview with someone because you never know what they're going through. And remember, you're amazing and you are not alone. I'll see you in the next video.